Good day and welcome to the New Believers Forum. It is Friday, April 3rd, and I must say also happy Sabbath. No, you know, the New Believers Forum, we've shifted this focus a little bit. We're doing it via Zoom because I, I wanted to bring in a very special guest. And I can't do that when I do it on Facebook Live. So I brought, used Zoom, and so I've brought in a special guest, and I'll introduce her in just a little while. But just to remind you that the New Believers Forum is for you if you are searching for answers from the Bible, searching for a way to know Christ searching for um, just answers in general, if you've been newly baptized, if you are thinking about getting baptized and you know having this personal walk with Christ, the New Believers Forum is for you. Um, I, I am a new believer myself, and so I find that there are certain things that I have struggled with over time, and you know, I know that it is not up to the church or, you know, to, 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 to fix me. I have to dig deep. I have to read. I have to pray. And I have to encourage myself um, in my walk with Christ. And so that's why I thought to do this. Because I know I've had the experience of others telling yeah. me that they also have this issue. So I just want to thank you for joining us on this New Believers Forum. And tonight, we're going to be talking about victory in God alone. And it's going to be an interesting topic because I'm going to share with you some things that I learned in um, my devotional. So my very special guest, I don't know, I can't say she's a mature believer. I don't know. I'll ask I'll allow her to tell me that. But oh, yeah. she, <laughs> she, oopsie, sorry, forgot to turn on my phone. Oopsie, forgot to turn on my phone. I'm so sorry. Gosh, that's okay. One of the things that we forget to do sometimes. Yeah, don't worry about it. All right. So, all right. Sister Karen Morgan, thank you so much for joining us on the New Believers Forum. Welcome. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here, Nicole. I've been enjoying your, your programs over the weeks and the months, and I'm very happy to be a part of it today. Thank you so much. And I must say that you are one of the first persons to really encourage me because when I started out, I didn't tell anyone. I just did it. And, you know, I was surprised when I went to church on Sabbath and you're like, oh, that's a good program. I'm like, oh, okay. People from okay. church are watching me. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, so thank you so much. Um, let's start with prayer, shall we? Yes, sure. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity where we can still speak about you, worship you freely. Oh Lord, we bless you for these days and we pray that you will be with us as we go through your word, Lord. Please let these words be part of our soul. Let, hide them within our hearts, oh Father, so we will never forget. Thank you, O oh God, for this program. Oh Lord, thank you for those who are new believers, Lord. And we ask that through your word, we will be strengthened by, in our faith and in our relationship with you. Thank you, O oh God, for this program. We, we ask that you go before us and make this a productive one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, ma'am. So I've always said that it is not the huge things that we should you know pray to overcome it's the habits that we've developed over time mm -hmm. and before we before we came on you were sharing something that was so profound um with me and i would love for you to start that as your intro okay thank you so much nicole as i said it's really a pleasure to be on with you tonight and at this time when most of us are locked indoors, and especially now that I'm a senior citizen and I have some other health issues, I have to be very careful. So I've been home for the past three weeks or so, and I'm really, really, really not dealing with it very well at the end of the day. So this is really a good way to, to a good outlet for me. So I was saying to you that 
I have been following the 100 days of prayer that the World Church is doing. And last night I was digging a little deeper and I looked at a document that they, they have published that they talk about um, some of the, the spiritual breaches that as Christians that we are committing and sometimes we're not even aware of it. And um, it's true for every, at every level. We are all being sanctified, but we are at different levels. But all of us, whether new believers or not so new believers, all of us go through some of that. And I was looking at some of the things they were talking about. And the one that struck me the most, where it says, you should humble yourself before the Lord. Don't watch other people. Don't look at other people. You are to look at yourself and present yourself in front of God. Open up your heart to him and search your own self to see what it is that you're not doing that is pleasing to God and that will give him glory. And at the end of the day, that will end up in yourself, you being saved. And so I, I really wanted to share a little bit of that with you. Um, I, I, I need to learn Zoom a little bit more because I would have loved to share this document. But I, I'm just going to look at and read just a small section okay. and then we can continue. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the one that really got to me was about um, idols and I, idols and, and, and addictions are coming to the same way. And um, when they spoke about idols, they were referring to everything that we do, our jobs, yeah. our pride, how we, yeah. some of us love to dress up and love to see ourselves. We take, put on all this makeup and do these selfies. Everybody's doing a selfie. And is that really worshiping God or is that worshiping yourself? Mm -hmm. Because the, the Lord wants us always to focus on him and not to be so much into self because that is, a, that is how Satan got into trouble because he became too proud and we have this this nature to be proud mm -hmm. and those things are not of God and he doesn't want us to have them and so through prayer it invites us to, to confess these things repent of them and ask the Lord to, to give us a, a new heart and a right spirit that was one thing the other thing I wanted to mention is about addictions and addictions are not necessarily, although those count as well, because you do have persons who are Christ, <clears throat> pardon me, who are Christians, but they smoke, they like alcohol, they drink coffee and tea, um, guilty, <laughs> and <laughs> other <laughs> other things that are not pleasing to God, and we like the drinking of coffee and tea. Yes, please, because I want you to go there. Because I, I, I'm going to go there. You yes. see, one thing I don't have any fear, and if I can admit to you, and I said we must confess our sins one to the other. I grew up in a family where my grandmother grew the plants in the yard. Yes, yes. okay. And she would reap and dry them and grind them, and mm. she would make coffee tea in the mornings now how should give it to the children yes we also reared goats my grandma had a lot of goats and she would put the goat's milk so she would it really goat's milk you're getting and she'd add a little coffee, coffee and that is Im unimaginably delicious <laughs> and then she'd make it sweet and so as children we learned to like that as a beverage yeah. and then as i got older my mother also grew up in the same culture, so she was also a coffee person. And when I got into my teen years, when I started studying late hours, long hours, we were now having coffee to stay awake in the days. Mm -hmm. And so it has become an addiction. Mm -hmm. So I got to a place where if I didn't have my coffee, I would have headaches. Wow. And so when I tried to break from it, Two or three days, I'd be having serious headaches. Wow. And what does the Karen do? We go back, right back to right it. Back to it yes. Right. And even. So, let me understand. All this time, did you grow up um, in the church? Oh, not in the Adventist church. I, we were Baptists. So, we went to church every Sunday, yes. And we had to go to Sunday school. And we, we had 
youth something, some youth meeting on Wednesday okay. night. So I grew up in, in a Sunday church. Yes. All right, so why then is why then is did you come to see coffee as something which is not palatable oh. to our spiritual health? Okay. All right. So I became an Adventist in well, truthfully, I've always been a sympathizer of the Adventist church. So as children, we went to crusades and what have you. So I was familiar with the Adventist faith. I had an, my, one of my, my, she's my, uh, my uncle's wife lived just near to our house. And like on Friday evening, she would invite us to come over and we do Bible study with them. So I kind of had a little knowledge of that of what they believed mm -hmm. and i know that one of the things is that anything that had any, any any drugs that would enhance you in any way was not acceptable so the caffeine in coffee and tea is the thing that we crave really at the end of the day because that is what is a stimulant and so later on when i became an adventist um it also came up and the same was true for pepsi <laughs> so it is the caffeine that's really the issue okay so anything that would destroy the body so to speak it, yes because um, we, our body so, is, a, is god's temple and we're putting drugs in it stimulants which is not of god so yes would that apply to other things as well that may have caffeine in it for example energy drinks um, oh yes chocolate Yes, chocolate, really? chocolate. Well, that, that is the thing you see, and we, we have to be sure about what we are doing. We don't want to say it's coffee and tea, and yet we're we are having chocolate. And I learned the other day that there is um, fever grass. I read something that says fever no, grass no. tea has a very high concentration of caffeine. No. And I wasn't. I am telling you <laughs> that yes, and it's yeah. a, that's a tea that I love. We grow the grass yeah. outside and we love it, but there is some caffeine in there, and so that we have to be careful oh. because when we make the vows for baptism as new believers, one of the vows that we make says we would not put any drugs into our body. Okay. I'm gonna have to research that fever grass one. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. So, so, th and as you said, well, if you don't know, my husband will say God will wink at if it, if you don't know. But if you if you know and you persist with it, then this is where the issue is. Okay. So the 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 addiction. So that's 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 well, my I personal tragedy but the addictions and, and the, the self-idolization with, with the, the um, with being so mm. into yourself and and so that we forget we even in in what you, the dressing and um, somebody spoke in the same article they spoke about buying clothes and shoes and how women will just buy that particular shoe or that dress because oh it's nice it looks good i imagine oh, I, I could step out sabbath to go to church in this one and so it becomes um something that we really have to be careful about and so what what i'm saying is that i am struggling with that now and so i'm praying and i'm and in my prayer i'm saying to the lord listen this is my history this is a problem i have it's not an easy thing to to, to just drop it so i need you because i can't do this on my own to, mm. to help me to drop that particular habit but the all of us have different things and as we as i said early, earlier in in you know prefacing what we were going to discuss i am not going to be looking at nicole and say nicole has this or nicole has that it is for me karen to look into myself and to in my quiet time in my quarantine to go before the lord and present what it is that I am struggling with and, and deal with that and encourage yeah. others to do the same. All right. So, um, so as, go ahead. Sorry, as we talk about being victorious, how, how, imagine how beautiful it will be when I can give a testimony to say that I have gained victory over this thing through prayer and through fasting and prayer and just giving it up because the thing about repentance you don't just 
go before the Lord and, and, and repent and confess that you're, you're doing this thing, you should also walk away from it. And I often refer to what Christ said to the woman who was caught in adultery. He said, um, your sins are forgiven, go and sin no more. And any sin is still sin. So whatever it is that is my sin, my weakness, and it, these hidden sins that nobody else knows but you, but you have them, you give them to the Lord and you walk away from them. You don't do them anymore. You sin no more. And that is when I believe that is what sanctification really is. When you get victory over those things and you, you're, as Sister White says, God gives you more holiness. And that ultimately, at the end of the day, when he comes, he's looking for a holy people. So yes, it is yes. important that we, we give up. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. What an excellent segue um, into, into what, um, what we're doing because John 1, 1 John, sorry, 5 and verse 4 mm -hmm. reminds us that for whatever is born of God overcometh the world. And that is the victory that overcometh the world, our faith. Yes. Now, the Christian life is a battle and a march. It's not a nice, smooth path. Not so as, 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 a, as a new believer or as someone who is encouraged to follow Christ, that's the first thing that we have to say. It is, not, it is a battle and it is a march. But the victory to be gained is not won by human power. The field of conflict is the domain of the heart. Did you realize that? The battle oh, yes. which we have to fight, <laughs> the greatest battle that was ever fought by human beings is the surrender of self to the will of God. The yielding of the heart to the sovereignty of love. The old nature born of blood and of the will of the flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The hereditary tendencies the former habits must be given up. It Amen. is not a, even a if, a but, or a suppose. It must be. It must Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sister White goes on to say that those who determine to enter the spiritual kingdom will find that all the powers and passions of an unregenerate nature, <laughs> backed by the forces of the kingdom of darkness, are arrayed against them selfishness and pride will make a stand against anything that would show them to be sinful. You notice? Mm -hmm. Selfishness and pride. Mm -hmm. It's like a defense mechanism that we have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, whenever we're going to show up, you know, the things that we don't like about ourselves. Yes. We cannot of ourselves conquer the evil desires and habits that strive for mastery. We cannot overcome the mighty foe who holds us in his thrall. God alone can give us the victory. He desires us to have the mastery over ourselves, our yes. own will and our way. Yes. But he cannot work with us without our consent and cooperation. The divine yes. spirit works through the faculties and powers given to us. Our energies are required to cooperate with God. It goes on further to say that the victory is not won without much earnest prayer, mm -hmm. without the humbling of self at yes. every step. Our will is not to be forced into cooperation with divine agencies but it must be voluntarily submitted yes were it possible to force upon you with a hundredfold greater intensity the influence of the spirit of god it would not make you a christian a fit subject for heaven the stronghold of satan would not be broken the will must be placed on the side of god's will you are not able of yourself to bring your purposes and desires and inclinations into submission to the will of God. You are not able to do that on your own. 
Remember that, new believers. But if you are willing to be made willing, yes. God will accomplish work for you. Yes. Even indeed. casting down the imaginations. We can yes. read that um, scripture. It's 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5. What I love about studying the Bible is that there is an instruction, a reproof, or doctrine that backs up every single situation in our lives. Second <coughs> Corinthians 10, Chapter verse 10. 5. Yes, you have it? One second, I'm getting there. I'm getting 10, verse 5. Right, here we go. We are there. Casting, go ahead, read it for me, please. Okay. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience, obedience of Christ. Of Christ. Yes. And having then that victory, right? Philippians 2, verse 12 and 13 says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but no much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, yeah, for it is God which worketh yes. in you both yes. to will and to do. To do is good. Good, good pleasure. pleasure. Amen. Right? The victory that we have to overcome this world is in our faith. Yes. Nothing we can do is of ourselves. I was a ardent coffee drinker. Mm. Two, three cups a day would be wow. my fill. And I never felt any way about that. Mm. And it is amazing when you come into the presence of God, and you start to search and you start to prayerfully seek. It's amazing. No, when I go anywhere and there is coffee there, I embrace the smell. I try not to repel it because in repelling it, I'm saying I'm better than you. I am not about that life and I'm, you know what I mean? Yes. Instead, I embrace it. Oh. This is a beautiful yes. smell. Oh, and I acknowledge I love it, the and smell then I, of coffee. And then I let it go. Yes. I will yes, have I my thank tea. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory. Yes. <laughs> and, and that is one thing that I know. And even now, you know, in my household, my, my sibling loves coffee. But it, it does not draw me in. And that's how I know that when we ask God for forgiveness of a sin and ask his help in overcoming something which is a challenge for us whenever it is it presents itself Karen whenever it presents itself we have to know and choose to walk and to choose the other way Absolutely. because he does not want to force as, no. the, as, as the, 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 the breeding was just telling us. He doesn't yes. want to support our cooperation because then it would not be Christian. It would not yes. be of our own. Yes. And not only that, there is something always that we have to do. God is very willing and he helps us and carries us. But he's not going to force us, as you said. In our will, there's something we have to do. We have to decide to walk away from it, yes. to give yes. it up. Yes, to, for, yes. to move away, to go the other way, to yes, seek a yes. better path. Yes. 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 Um, when at the start of the program, you mentioned two things. And the things that you've actually mentioned, Karen, are from, are actually the laws of God. Mm -hmm. One about the idols, do not commit, do not have any other gods yes. before me. And Second I think our, our, and our addictions, I believe, um, may fall into that bracket yes. because we are putting something then before Christ and before the law of God, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what the law does. The law kinds of shine, put a light on what sin is. Is that, is that how it is? Yes, yes, it is. Absolutely. And then you said the second thing, um, 
about don't watch people stay in your own lane do what you have to do you know that that is a very powerful reminder of the sin of covetousness yes <laughs> without a doubt tell us a little bit about that particular sin because i don't think we pay much attention to it and we think it's just um that particular law sorry that, and i think it's just something that we read and we never really look at it but the other day i had to remind myself and to just start giving thanks immediately when i realized that i was saying lord how come so and so and so and so and so and so and i don't have so and so and i was like uh -huh. it's, like, it's like i got a little shocker right then and there to say why yes, are you doing that is. right i'm gonna read something for you um when i find it <laughs> the, uh, the, the the study yesterday we read this is Psalm 139. I'm trying to remember where it says exactly that. It says that I have looked at the world and I've seen these people doing so well, getting wealth, do, getting yes. rich, having all these things, their fine houses, everything there. And I've coveted it. And the psalmist was repenting to God for, for that because he said, but you are my God and everything that I need is in you. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I've just not allowed my heart to be humble enough to accept that. I want what the world has. I want all these things. Yes. And as you said, that is the sin of covetousness. Yes. And that's Breaking what Christ... When Christ spoke to that rich young ruler and he said, I have obeyed all the commandments. I've done all the right things. But Jesus said, all but one. And that is, you covet of your own riches to give it to help the poor. Yeah. I ask you, the only thing I want you to do, sell what you have, give it to the poor and come and follow me. And you're not willing to give up the sin of covetousness. Oh my that is a lesson that we all need to reflect on. That is a law um, that we all need to reflect on in one way or another um, in our lives. Maybe not know, but it's something that we must always remember. You know, so all the bad mind things and stuff yes. like that, you know, you have to yes. kind of get that out of our system that is not of God. All right. Um, the apostle paul reminds uh, peter sorry reminds us in um second peter 2 verse 1 and 6 he presents before the believers the ladder of christian progress every step of which represents advancement in the knowledge of god and in the climbing of which there is to be no standstill this for me, for me, that's why, you know, we have to read, we have to read the Bible and prayerfully do so. A, a verse a day or a chapter a day. And at times we might can only manage a verse because one verse can be so profound. Yes. Second Peter 2 verse 1. Second Peter 1 verse 5 and 6 says, And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and are born, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oftentimes when I read um, these verses, Karen, I, I have to use it to reflect on where I am yeah. in, in my Christian journey. You know, Steve Harvey came here and he said something like, you know, I'm just like a little 10% or something like that Christian, you know, I'm not a big time Christian. But oh, wow. he, he just kind of said, you know, basically said, oh, judge me, <laughs> you know. Okay. And, and um, sometimes we have to wonder, where are we on this ladder and this wrong, each, each step on this ladder, like where are we? Are we at the bottom where we're just trying to exercise our faith? 
And how are we going to exercise that faith? How can we, practically speaking, exercise that faith? What, you know, what does that look like? But it's like we can't be standstill. What is virtue, Auntie Karen? Knowledge. That's what we're doing now, reading the word so we can gain knowledge. Temperance, which is our self-control, the same thing we were talking about before, overcoming. Mm -hmm. Patience. Lord, you know, send me luck battle. <laughs> Have mercy, Father, have mercy. Lord, that is something I constantly have to pray on because I get short very quickly. Mm. Godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity. These are the, the rungs on this ladder in our Christian journey. I can only say that as a new believer, come, let us bind together. Let us work together to make our calling and election sure calling and election is it that we have run out of time nicole well uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> we have run out of time but i will give you the final word oh i seem to have um lost karen there for a bit but I just want to really and truly thank her for coming on and for encouraging us the way that she did. Just remember that whatever it is that you may be struggling with, it is not something that you can do on your own. This is something that we have to take to Christ and we have to prayerfully ask him to work with us to overcome. And the victory is in God alone and the victory is in our faith. Our faith will be, will be magnified. We will definitely be better for it and so i just want to thank karen for having come on to the program we are at the end of another new believers forum and i want to just thank you for joining me i will be here live on zoom and i'm going to post out the the link so that you can join me on this intimate forum for us to have this conversation and to take it even further send me your questions in direct message me <clears throat> or send me an email at elnicolebrown at gmail.com. I'll be more than happy to answer the questions for you and to find the resource persons who are able to do that. Um, in my prayers, I'm always asking God to forgive us of our sins, not the ones that are, you know, obvious, but even so the ones that are not. And tonight, my prayer will be no different. So I ask you to just join with me in prayer as we end this New Believers Forum. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love. Thank you for your light that you have shed into our lives. Lord, you have given us a, a bit of your word tonight. We pray, O oh God, for your guidance. We pray, O oh God, and thank you that you have made it possible for us to know your character and to know how it is that we can see your face and have a claim to your riches in glory that you are preparing for us lord please forgive us of our sins those that we're aware of god and even so much those that we are not please heighten them in our minds lord transcend send your holy spirit to live within us and we'll, we'll live within our hearts so that we may know you and that we may choose you at each and every um juncture Thank you, Jesus, for coming to die on the cross so that we can have this relationship with our Heavenly Father. Thank you, O oh God, for your love. Thank you for being with us. Continue, O oh God, to strengthen us and to help us to be brave to overcome. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ah, you're back, Karen. Yes, one moment. I lost internet for a minute. Just okay. one second. I'll be right back. Sure. Pause. All right. All right. So thank you for coming back. Um, we're sorry we missed you for a little bit, but um, we're just asking you for your final encouragement to the new believers who might be watching this program. Okay. All right. So if we're going to really make it into the kingdom, we have always each day 
to draw closer to the Lord. As Sister White says, I, I mentioned this before, that we have to build on ourselves. We have to be sanctified more and more each day. And some of the things that we can do to help ourselves to get past these besetting sins. Um, one is that we can humbly acknowledge to God the specific sin that we are concerned about mm -hmm. and ask Talk forgiveness from him, right? Yeah. Once you've done that, he will wash you clean. He will make you clean you up and, and make you what he wants you to be. Mm -hmm. But you can't go back tomorrow and do the same thing. So you have to turn and walk a new and different way. This is what is called true repentance. And just a quote from Sepsocrise, repentance includes sorrow for sin and a turning away from it. We shall not renounce sin unless we see its sinfulness. Until we turn away from it in heart, there will be no real change in the life. Amen. We have to ask God to show us anything that we need to do about our specific sins. So let us say we are doing something that is wrong to somebody. We have to go to them, apologize, and make good and, and improve on our behavior so and don't repeat the same behaviors. <clears throat> and in our prayers, this is going to be hard to do perhaps, but we have to let the Lord know that we are willing, <coughs> excuse me, to do whatever that we need to do to make it right. <coughs> and, I beg your pardon. and ask him to show us how. And finally, we have to obey what he leads us to. It might be hard sometimes, but we must obey what God leads us to in making it right. <coughs> I always say that I am willing and God is able. And so I just <coughs> leave it all to him. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone, um, and watching this New Believers Forum. And we look forward to seeing you again. Have a good night. Thank you, Karen. Good night to you. It was my pleasure. Thank you.